Well, okay, let me explain that. Uh, IUI, I just don't really approve of. Uh, intercourse is better than IUI, and I'll tell you why. Because with IUI, the sperm go up into the fallopian tube right away, and they're gone uh, in three hours. And so you're never going to get the time ring exactly right. You want sperm to always be there whenever you ovulate. And intercourse is better because your cervical mucus will hold on to the sperm, deliver it up to the fallopian tube over three days. So there will, if you're having intercourse regularly uh, three or four times a week, there will always be some sperm present to fertilize the egg whenever you ovulate. So I wouldn't, I would go from just not doing anything other than regular intercourse uh, to IVF. And I wouldn't take that intermediate step of IUI, which is a waste of money. And uh, it's a very low, it's a success rate, but a low success rate. Now, failing to ovulate is usually caused by a condition we call PCOS. And it's a very misunderstood condition. PCOS just means that you were born with too many eggs. Well, that's great in the sense that you'll have a later, uh, men, uh, later uh, uh, menopause. I mean, it, instead of age 51, you may not have menopause till 60 or 65 because you have so many eggs. But when you're young and you wanna have babies, that large number of eggs inhibits your pituitary gland from secreting FSH in the first part of your menstrual cycle. And so you don't recruit a dominant follicle. Those eggs are suppressing your pituitary gland. You just don't recruit a dominant follicle. But, uh, and, and so you go along with irregular cycles or late ovulation or even no ovulation. Uh, it's a very precise timing that uh, nature uh, provides for these 28 to 30 day cycles in which uh, first the uh, lead follicle is stimulated and all the other follicles fall behind and the FSH begins to go down after it had a rapid rise at menstruation. And then as the estrogen goes up, eventually around four day 14, it stimulates the pituitary to release a huge amount of LH that causes you to ovulate. And then if you don't get pregnant 14 days later, you have your uh, menstruation. So it's really a beautiful, precisely timed situation, but it depends on a high rise in FSH in the first day of your menstrual cycle. And that's not going to happen if you have too many eggs. So that's what PCOS is, and that's what lack of ovulation is. Uh, I have a bias on this. Uh, I think that if you're not ovulating and you've been trying for a year to get pregnant without birth control, then you ought to just go to mini IVF, minimal stimulation, because you have so many eggs. It could be dangerous just to stimulate you and let you get pregnant either with IUI or with intercourse, because you can ovulate so many eggs without control that it could be potentially dangerous, actually. Uh, multiple pregnancies, hyperstimulation syndrome. IVF is so much safer than that because we can transfer one or two embryos and freeze the extras and we can make sure we can even freeze them all if you're in danger of hyperstimulation. So IVF is just so much safer and higher success rate than messing around with ovarian stimulation with hormones and IUI. So I think that's the best approach. I'd be glad to talk to you about it personally if this sounds confusing to you because I know you'd rather avoid going to IUI IVF. Uh, but I really think that's what you're, that's what you're better off doing. Mm -hmm.